so cruel Now you're older, still a youngin' But you're playing the playin' the cool Get to know the whole world like I know the places that I grew up in Canada. So I, the, the combination of doing a difficult job and running all the experiments, but at the same time flying around like Superman or, or like a Jonathan Livingston Seagull or something, and then with the whole world like a magic carpet every time you go by the window, uh, it's just an intoxicating combination of things. Just a, I mean, a huge, you say I was lucky, I know how lucky I am to be one of the first humans to see that and to try and open doors for other Canadians, for other people to have a chance to see that in the future. It, it's just an amazing experience. Um, we try and share it through images, through words, through IMAX films, just to try and bring back some of the magic that exists by, by living in space. Wow. Um, well, seeing the Earth the way you did, and as the other astronauts do, do you notice the environmental issues in a different way that you may have before? Yes, of course, you see the world so clearly. Uh, you can't see super fine detail because we're uh, a million feet away. We're, we're a few hundred kilometers up. So uh, you need a big camera lens to, to really see fine details. But what you can see are the big changes. You can see some of the big lakes that, that because of poor uh, national policy that are starting to dry up, like uh, Lake Chad in uh, Africa, just south of Sahara, or the um, one of the big lakes in Russia and Kazakhstan uh, that they have stopped feeding water to, and so the shoreline has moved tens of kilometers, and what used to be a big vital fishing industry and a very important lake for agriculture has now dried up uh, to the point where it, it's hardly recognizable. You see that happen. You see any of the very colorful, polluting areas where, where maybe the effluent from somewhere is, is a different color. You see the pollution over the cities. You try and get a good look at Mexico City or, or, or Los Angeles or, or Beijing or somewhere, and, and you can hardly ever see them because of the thick gray smog and clag that's over top. So you can definitely see it. But you can see a lot of the natural changes, too. When a big volcano erupts, it puts so much ash into the upper atmosphere that as the sun shines through the atmosphere, you can see all of these layers that are normally invisible. The world is being affected by people, but you can't disregard all of the natural changes, too. And something like uh, Mount Pinatubo, which erupted in the Philippines shortly before my first space flight, made a big difference in what you could see in the atmosphere, and it, it affects uh, reflected sunlight as well. It's a huge living spaceship that we all live on, uh, the planet Earth, moving through the universe. And the stuff that we do to it, and the natural processes and the meteorites that crash into it, they all affect its health. And one of the best places to understand the health of our planet is from orbit. The satellites that look at it, the astronauts and, and all the photography that we take that looks at it, we're really starting to understand the health of our planet uh, by being able to look at it as a spaceship in the universe and to track the, the changes that we make and, and the natural cycle of a planet uh, from the amazing high vantage point of orbit. Space programs don't really get the public attention that they once did for like the Apollo missions going to the moon. but and it, kind of seems like automated, unmanned exploration is what's going to be funded by the governments for the next while. So why do you think the International Space Station and Canadian Space Agency is so important? Yeah, I think that's a, a misperception that's getting pretty common. I mean, uh, the moon landings were being canceled before they even got Apollo 11 onto the surface of the moon. The last two moon landings were canceled. Uh, and at the same time, there was a tremendous amount of unmanned exploration going on uh, with probes uh, in the 70s going to Venus and to Mars and beyond. So nothing's really changed. And there's sort of a, a rose-colored glasses view of, of how things used to be. But uh, most of that is, is just kind of a, a, a perception. It's always going to be a mixture of unmanned vehicles, of robot vehicles, of, of simple satellites and simple probes, and the great human adventure of deciding what this means to us as a species. What does it mean to us poetically and philosophically and, 
historically? And, and how are we going to move into this whole new universe that our technology is just opening up to us? The, the whole history of human exploration, of building technology that allows you to live somewhere or to travel somewhere that you never could go before, and then trying to figure that out, and then how do you make that part of the common human experience? Um, we'll always use machines to, to make it easier and easier as we can compared to maybe sailing around the world in 1492 to now getting on an airplane and flying across the Atlantic in a few hours. Uh, that's, that's an evolution over 500 years. That same sort of evolution of technology, of using the best of our inventions, and of bringing all of the, the great uh, both philosophical and financial wealth that comes from expanding human capability, bringing that all together that's just naturally going to move into three dimensions, including space. And Canada, I think, is doing it really smart. We are not trying to build the big expensive spaceships. We are involved in areas where we can really make a difference, where our, our robotics, for example, or our space communications, or our remote sensing, or our, our ability to build a small satellite that can look at stars and look at threats to the Earth we, we really pick areas that make a lot of sense for our industry and our universities and try and get the most bang for our buck. And I think we've got a, one of the best records in the world of a space agency in how we have combined both the unmanned and the human side of space exploration. We've had a lot of Canadians fly in space.